In misty ancient times, the ragged edges of the known world bore the grim warning, here be dragons. The Salish Sea is home to far more than its fair share of mythical beasties that come to find really exist. Now we see that another great fish tale is true. A genuine Salish sea monster, with scales as sharp as razors, able to hurl its huge, cold-blooded body into the sky. We've discovered that indeed, here be dragons. To behold these awesome creatures, our hero must venture deep into their lair and do battle. This is Joe Gatos with the Sea Doc Society. We're headed up to British Columbia to study... Wait a minute. What did he say? I said you're going to battle dragons. Oh, no, no. Oh, yes, you are. Nope. We're going there to study North America's largest, most amazing freshwater fish. And do battle. Okay, there might be a battle, but it's all in the name of science. Yes, battle science. No. The safest way to study these fish is to first catch them on a rod and reel. Aye, safest for the fish, maybe. Be quiet. <laughs> oh, fine. We're guided on this expedition by Kevin Estrada. Kevin grew up on the banks of the Fraser River, the Salish Sea's most important tributary. After playing professional hockey in the NHL in Europe, Kevin returned home to concentrate on his other great passion, fishing for white sturgeon one of the world's greatest sport fish. Kevin's office is the beautiful and ever-changing scenery of the Fraser Valley. But as he navigates to the fishing grounds, he has very little time to enjoy the sights. This mighty river is at full flow, and it's loaded with logs and debris that could crumple his jet boat like a tin can. Relying on his decades of experience, along with a sweet state-of-the-art sonar setup, Kevin finds us a promising spot where the currents feel right and the bottom looks good and fishy. Kevin's company is called Sturgeon Slayers. Yes, yeah, slay the dragons. Hush, there will definitely not be any actual slaying going on. Ah, nuts. Slaying is fishing slang for having great success. Kevin's caught record-setting sturgeon, but they've all been released alive. We're fortunate that our Northwest sturgeon populations are in relatively good shape. As a family, sturgeon species are endangered throughout the world, primarily due to the great demand for caviar, which has led to overfishing and poaching. To protect our sturgeon, the only kind of fishing allowed for them in the Salish Sea watershed is catch and release. And the best place for that is on the Fraser. What you'll notice is that every step of the way, this fishing gear is designed to minimize stress on the fish. The line is super heavy, the tension or the drag on the line is really heavy, so we can bring in the animal quickly, and the hooks being used are barbless. Our goal is to get data on sturgeon of all ages. When baby sturgeon first hatch as tadpole-like larvae, they munch on microorganisms. It's not long, though, before they develop into miniature prehistoric-looking predators and start hunting for one of their favorite foods, fish roe. So that's what Kevin will try and attempt our first bite. Um, this is what we're going to be using. Ah, oh, that's so cool. You made a little egg packet. Yeah, so that's going to be for a juvenile. We're going to Delicious. Use. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> We don't have to wait long uh, before wait, something no hungry oh, finds oh, the bait. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> That's great. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. While I reel it in, Kevin deploys a custom sling to safely hold the fish beside the boat. It is a sturgeon. This has got to be the coolest looking fish I've ever seen. It's like a shark mated with a submarine from 20,000 leagues under the sea to make a water drag. We keep the fresh water flowing so the fish stays happy and oxygenated. Despite being members of the bony fish family, sturgeon have skeletons almost entirely made of cartilage, like sharks. The bones a sturgeon does have are on the outside. These incredibly sharp structures are called scutes, and they're something you'd find on a crocodile or back in the day, on a stegosaurus. So these are the skewed here. The 
to come down the side and this guy's a young one so super sharp along here and this is what protects him from getting eaten by bigger predators this is a fish built for hugging the bottom in murky rivers and estuaries look how tiny his eyes are these eyes are doing nothing under there in that murky water but this guy had absolutely no problem finding our bait in zero visibility he did it by first homing in on the scent of the fish row. That brought him close enough to use these four barbels to both feel and taste the eggs. Sturgeons not only have taste buds inside their mouths, but also on their lips and out here on the barbels. A sturgeon hunting for food in the muddy bottom is like us fishing around for stray popcorn kernels in a dark room by poking around the carpet with our tongues. Another thing they have in common with sharks is an array of special organs around their snouts, the ampulla of Lorenzini. These work like metal detectors, but instead of metal, they're tuned into the electrical impulses given off by living animals. First thing we do is scan the fish to see if it's been tagged. This is exactly what we were hoping for, a juvenile non-tagged sturgeon. So we are the first ones to capture this. We'll put a tag in it now, and then we'll get to see how it grows over the years. Really cool markings on this yeah. fish. Look at the colors on it. This is a beautiful fish. Biologists train volunteers from the Fraser Valley Angling Guides Association on how to take precise measurements and properly place and read pit tags. That's a huge resource for researchers. They use the same kind of ID tags on sturgeon that vets put inside tiny kittens and puppies in case they get lost. A critical study currently underway focuses on discovering just how many young sturgeon are surviving their early years. If fewer young fish are making it to adulthood, eventually there may not be enough breeders around to grow the population. So catching, tagging, and recapturing these little guys is a very important step in knowing how to protect the species. We also record the weight of any fish that are small enough for the scale. It's another good data point to track growth and health. 4.5. Yeah, that's a world record. <laughs> that is the biggest sturgeon I've ever caught in my life. Our next fish is a little bigger. Still a youngster, likely around seven years old. It takes 15 or 20 years or sometimes even longer for white sturgeon to mature into breeding adults. It's surprising how little we know about sturgeon. We're not even sure of their maximum size. There are stories of 20-footers weighing nearly a ton. Legends? Maybe. But we don't really know how fast they grow or how old they get, other than we're sure they can live more than 100 years. And there are still many mysteries about their migrations and spawning areas. Studies have shown signs that the Fraser River sturgeon could be headed for trouble. So if we're going to keep their population healthy, we need to answer all of these questions and more. To do that, scientists depend on the expertise of local fishing guides. A lot of fish that we fish up here, you'll actually see marks from nets on yeah, here. Yeah. This guy's pretty clean. Yeah, it looks really it's good. very clean. It's very as long as we fish. properly support their bodies and use wet hands so we don't disturb the protective coating on their skin, small sturgeon can be safely handled. This armored beauty represents one of the most ancient types of animals that's still around today. Sturgeon that looked like this one existed 200 million years ago. They've kept the same body shape and biology while watching Tyrannosaurus rex, Megalodons, and countless other cool species come and go from the Earth. Bottom. I mean, they're like, they're like sharks oh, teeth yeah. or something like that. And that That's mouth. Incredible. Once a sturgeon finds something it wants to eat, slurp. Its flexible mouth shoots out and sucks it up. Adult sturgeon can vacuum up anything that fits in their mouth. And that includes live full-grown salmon. Wait a second. A salmon? How big would a sturgeon have to be to swallow a whole salmon? We got a hookup! At first it seems like this is another small one. Nope! This is a big one. Now, the big game fishing ballet begins. Between the small boat, my big feet, and Bob running around trying to take video, we're lucky Kevin's here to do the choreography. Walk back that way. Get away from the boat. Okay, now you're in for fight. He doesn't know he's hooked yet, so hold on tight. Doesn't even know he's hooked yet? What? Watch 
Yep. Try and get him back to the left. I don't want him jumping in the boat. Sure, Kevin. As if I have a choice in the matter. I have never hooked a fish this size. Not even close. Oh, God. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. We want to get the fish to the boat in less than 15 minutes to cause it the least amount of stress. That is absolutely fine with me. And I really wish someone would let this fish know that I'm happy to tap out any time now. Doesn't know he's hooked yet, so... <laughs> he still doesn't know he's hooked? Oh, God! Yeah. Just let him go, let him go, let him go. The power of this Stand fish up. is incredible. Yeah. I did not expect this. Although they're born and spawn in the river's cobblestone bottom in freshwater, sturgeon's gills and kidneys evolved the remarkable ability to let them cross back and forth between fresh and salt water, not just twice in their lifetime, like Pacific salmon, but as often as they want to. One sturgeon ID'd on the Fraser was originally tagged down in California's Klamath River, more than 600 miles away. It navigated the open Pacific and across the Salish Sea before heading upriver into fresh water again. And maybe white sturgeon do that all the time. We just don't know yet. Oh That holds the ground, and we're going to basically keep walking this way, and then I'm going to grab the line to slide them in. Okay. okay, hold on right there. Okay. Oh my god. Look at this guy. This is the biggest fish I've ever caught. Yeah. <laughs> this wow. is amazing. Good job. Great job. Oh With these god. big fish, we take advantage of another characteristic that sturgeon share with certain sharks and that we can put them under their own natural anesthesia simply by rolling okay, so them over. What we've done to reduce stress in this fish is we, we have it on its back and this induces sort of a tonic immobility where it actually calms the fish. So it's still getting water across its gills, but it's restful, it's not stressed. You see it's not moving. Actually, you could think it's asleep. Uh, by looking at it. And in a way, neurologically, it sort of is in a sleep right now. And that allows us to handle this fish, to measure this fish, and to do it in a very safe way. And we're gonna roll him over, and we're gonna be on the left side of his head. Okay. So we're gonna roll him this way. He's been caught before, yeah. but he wasn't this big last time he was caught. <laughs> Studies using pit tags give us a ton of data to show population trends, abundance, survival, migration, growth rates, all critical information to help the species. Okay, so I got 184 here, fork length. We measure to the fork and the tail from the nose to the fork along the lateral line. 184. So this nice fish was originally tagged in 2017 okay. as the first initial capture. And it was about 25 kilometers from here. And at that time, it was 161 centimeters. The largest sturgeon Kevin caught on the Fraser River was a record at a whopping 11 feet and six and a half inches. It was estimated to weigh between nine and 1,200 pounds. So almost twice the length and maybe five times the weight of this fish. Sturgeon handle stress better than most other fish by protecting their important organs from metabolic damage induced by exercise and rapid changes in their environment. This means they recover more quickly than other fish after being captured. Studies have shown that there's virtually zero mortality from catch and release fishing for sturgeon, as long as the fish are handled properly, like we're doing here. Oh, Kevin, that was dope! That was amazing! Nice. That's good, eh? Nice. <laughs> now, would you have gone for the second day of sturgeon research, the Fraser shows us her misty mood, and it is spectacular. What a great reminder that Salish Sea Watershed is not only one of the most beautiful places in the Northwest, but in the entire world. Once again, Kevin puts us in the right spot. For a fish this size, Kevin has to maneuver the boat away from the bank and out into the current. That doesn't make the fight any easier. It is kicking my butt. And that seems to really entertain Kevin. I guess that makes sense for someone who used to make his living throwing body checks in the NHL. 
I'm starting to think that old voiceover guy was right. This may be the safest way to gather data on Sturgeon. I might bust a gut before we even see this big fella. <laughs> Let's see how you do picking on somebody your own size, Sea Dog. Hush! Leave me alone! I'm busy! Nice stretch. Okay, reel again. When you can. You don't want to rush them. Just nice and easy. Hold right there. Yeah, hold right there. I'll get out of your way if you go sideways on me. Okay. Okay. Bye. Real? No. No. Nope. 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 And frankly, if I came face to face with a creature like this at six inch visibility, the water would instantly turn even more brown. There have been reports of sea monsters in Northwest waters ever since humans first arrived. I can definitely understand someone on a foggy morning spotting a huge, spiky, serpentine sturgeon and thinking they saw a dragon. As every sport fisher will eventually tell you, our biggest fish of the trip was the one that got away. This monster even comes up to the surface to show us his gigantic face. I'm not sure, but I think I see him laughing at me. Kevin kindly doesn't throw me overboard for losing the fish, but his expert guess is that it was about nine feet long and 400 pounds. But just like all the other animals in this fishing conservation project, that hardy monster will live to fight another day and keep adding to the population of this most incredible fish. Nice job losing that last fish there. That was a barbless hook. Oh, get out the violins, you cry, baby. Joe the Dragon Slayer. Me back in. Hush, you dollar store druid. Overeducated Egypt. Keg McMuffin. What's a sea dock anyway? People tie boats up to your big wooden head? Oh, count your lucky charms, you're just a voiceover. Ah, you want to go at me, do ya? Fish loser. Figment. Oh, gusto. Okay, that was a good one. You know, you're not actually a bad sort. Thanks. You know, you and me, we should go fishing sometime. Aye, that's a good idea. As long as I reel them in. Fish loser. Fish loser. Hi, this is Joe Gatos of the Sea Dock Society. Thanks for watching. Click over here to check out more episodes of Sailor Sea Wild. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can join Team Sea Doc on all our adventures. Thank you.